بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الامين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته الى يوم الدين ثم اما بعد يا عباد الله undoubtedly this life is filled with many trials and tribulations there are a lot of fitan that are connected with the life in order to better deal with them and navigate these trials and tribulations then it behooves us to reflect over some of the trials and tribulations of life qala fadil to shaykh shaykh sulaiman al ruhaili hafizhu allah ta'ala wa fitan al mahya kathira jiddan and the trials and tribulations of life then they are many fi al ahl wal mal wal awlad wal din wal dunya they could be connected to our families our money our children our din our worldly affairs so on and so forth kama qala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should only expect this because allah jalla wa ala he says ahasiba an-nas an yutraku an yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun he says does mankind believe does mankind think that they'll be left alone to say that they believe and they will not be put to test Do we think that we will be left alone just to make a claim and say yes we are believers but we will not be put to test our patience will not be put to test our faith will not be put to test our life we will not be put to test na'am bila shak bila ray this life is filled with trials and tribulations wa min al-fitan al-ikhtibar and from the trials and tribulations or from the fitan then there are trials that we go through trials in life and from these trials and mal money wealth it is from the trials of this world it is from the trials of this life wal aulad and our children they are from the trials of this world they are from the fitan of this life qala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabihi al-karim inna ma amwalukum wa auladukum fitna allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in his noble book that verily your money meaning your wealth and your children they are trials for you they are tests for you now a person may ask and they may say well how how are the money and how are the children a test for us naam reflect allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elsewhere in the quran he makes it very clear allah ta'ala he says ya ayyuhal ladina amanu la tulhikum amwalukum wala auladukum an dhikri la allah ta'ala he says o oh, you who believe do not allow your money nor your children to distract you from the remembrance of allah this is how money this is how the children can become a fitna can become a trial and a tribulation when an individual becomes obsessed with the attainment of wealth so much so that it prevents them and it becomes a hindrance between them and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i want you to reflect upon this now and i want you to ask yourselves because it is about self improvement it's not about looking to the next individual and saying oh, yani what he or she does not have or has or so on and so forth their condition examining and analyzing their condition so on and so forth. no it's not about that it's about us analyzing our own conditions is that we weigh ourselves is that we judge ourselves before we are judged we weigh ourselves before we are weighed so on and so forth so i want you to think and i want you to reflect 
how many individuals it is their situation that they build their daily life around ibadah. They build their daily life around the salah. So everything in their life, it comes around the salah. What, t- what comes first? The salah, the ibadah, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This comes first. Everything else you fit it in. You fit it in around the salawat. Naam. This is how it should be. There are some people, wallah alhamd, that this is their outlook when it comes to their daily life. This is how they approach their day. But then there are other people who they fit the salah in. Why? Because their base, their foundation for what they do day in and day out is the dunya. Is the dunya. So they'll make sure they're at work on time. They will make sure they get up on in time, nice and early, to make it to work on time. So they're going to bed at night and getting up in the morning is based upon what? Their work. It is based upon their work. And this is why you find these individuals where when they have to get up early to make it to work on time, they don't miss Fajr during the week. But on the weekend, they oversleep. During the week, they up. On the weekend, they oversleep. Why? Is it because the ibadah is the motivating factor for them to get up at a particular time or is it their job? How many of the individuals they rush at the end of the time of Salatul Dhuhr or Asr to fit in the Salat? Why? Because they were preoccupied with work. Now this is day in and day out. You see? These are individuals who they fit the Salat in. The individuals who they fit the prayer in, they fit the ibadah in. They are not individuals who mold their day and shape their day around the ibadah. So these are individuals who their money and their wealth is a trial for them because it hinders them from the remembrance of Allah. When Allah Alhamdulillah is speaking about those who still pray, who still manage to make their prayers. Although they may be late or although they may be at the end of the time, they still make their prayers. Now what about those who miss the prayers? What about those who go through their whole shift? Dhuhr comes by, Asr comes by, they don't pray. They're stuck in traffic, they don't pray Maghrib. Now they make it home in the time of Isha or at the end of the time of Maghrib, now they want to pray all their prayers. Now one time, subhanAllah, do not be like this. Because Allah Ta'ala, He informs us of these individuals who they allow wealth, they allow their children. Now, likewise, the pursuit of wealth and everything is because they want to take care of the children. So this is why they're chasing after the wealth. They want to take care of the wife. They want to buy this house. They want to drive this car. They want to wear these clothes. They want to go on this place for a vacation, so on and so forth. This is why they're chasing after the wealth. This is why it preoccupies them so much so that they become addicted to it, counting it, going back, reflecting, counting, making sure, so on and so forth. Allah Ta'ala, He tells us these individuals who they allow the wealth and they allow the children to distract them from the remembrance of Allah. Allah Ta'ala, He says, وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ And whoever does that, then verily, undoubtedly, they are the ones who are losers. Naam. Whoever does that, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ This construction in the Arabic language, it is there and we understand from it an emphasis that whoever does this, then undoubtedly, unquestionably, no doubt, they are losers. Indeed, they are losers. Those who allow their money and the children to become a distraction from the remembrance of Allah. Because remember, we have been created. We have been brought into existence. We have been placed upon this earth. And everything that is upon this earth has been placed here so we may utilize it to what? To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala, He says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I did not create the jinn, nor the mankind, except for them to worship me. So the jinn and the human beings, they were created 
to establish the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to worship Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. This is why we are here in this earth. This is the purpose of life. It is not to chase this career path. It is not to chase this position. It is not to chase this money. It is not to chase to become part of this tax bracket. It is not to chase to drive this or to buy that, so on and so forth. No. But it is to establish the ibadah, to establish the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from the beauty of the deen, is that the deen, it calls us to be moderation. It doesn't tell us that, no, 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 you can't be rich. Being rich is haram. No, being rich is okay. But it is incumbent that you are one who the money it is in your hand, not one who the money is in their heart. Because if the money is in your heart, it controls you. But if the money is in your hand, you control it. So the money is here to help us establish the ibadah. It is here to help us so that we can build the masajid for the establishment of the ibadah. It is to help us so that we can build the schools, so that we can teach the children, so that they can understand properly how to believe and the basic skills that they need to move on and to live inside of this life. It is to give charity. So we give charity to the widows. We give charity to the orphans. We give charity to those who are in need. We feed those who are hungry. We clothe those who need clothes. We give drink and water to those who need water, juice, and so on and so forth. This is why the money is collected. This is why the money is here. And at the same time, that alhamdulillah, we can spend upon our families making them happy. At the same time, we can still buy that nice dough or that nice jilbab and so on and so forth. At the same time, we can still have nice shoes and drive a nice vehicle. No problem. No problem. But it is there to help us establish the ibadah. It is not there to prevent us and to hinder us from the ibadah. So once we have taken the wealth and we allow it to become a hindrance, now the wealth has become misappropriated. Now the wealth is inside of its proper place. Now the wealth is not fulfilling its purpose. But the purpose of it is to help us and to strengthen us and to aid us in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those who allow their monies and their children to become a distraction for them, then verily, undoubtedly, these are the ones who are from the losers. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who are successful. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from the winners. Hada, aqulu qawli hada, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li jami'i al-muslimin, fa astaghfiru fa innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ba'in. Ya ibadullah, there were a few fitan that we wanted to look at today. But because of time, we will not be able to mention except a couple. So, in restricting, I want to mention one which is very important. And in brief, Mention some of the ones we're not able to go into more depth and elaborate upon. From those in which we can't go into more depth and elaborate upon, then of course, from the greatest trials and tribulations is kufr. Naam. And I don't think anyone would debate this, that kufr, shirk, then it is a calamity. It is a fitna. Naam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside of his noble book, he tells us, وَالْفِتْنَةَ أَشَدُّ مِنَ الْقَتْلِ And that fitna is greater than murder. Naam, is worse than murder. What is meant by fitna here? That it is shirk, it is kufr, polytheism, disbelief. No one doubts this. These are very evil things. This is a, a, a tremendous trial. Likewise, from the tremendous trials, then it is Bid'ah, innovation, a tremendous trial, tremendous fitna. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told us that the worst of all affairs are newly invented matters. For every newly invented matter is a going astray. Every newly invented matter is a bid'ah. Every bid'ah is a going astray. Every going astray is in the hellfire. So this is something that its end result is in the fire. So this is tremendous. Ma'asu, sins. This is tremendous. Naam, a tremendous fitna. The sins. Al-ikhtilaf al-ara. 
the difference of opinions as relates to the religion. This is a tremendous trial and tribulation that we find ourselves gripped with in these last days and times. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, وَمَنْ يَعِشْ بَعْدِي فَسَيَا خِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا And whoever lives after me, then he will see much differing. Naam, he will see much differing. And this differing, بِلَا شَكُّ بِلَا رَيْبٍ This is fitna. Naam. But there's one that I want to concentrate on. Because from those we have heard much about that, uh, perhaps in the past, we have heard much about that here, and perhaps you have heard about it other places as well. But the one I want to highlight, which is very important, as well, is the fitna, the fitna that the Muslim he may reach, that comes from the people. Naam. Women al fitna, fitna to Muslim bin nas. And from the trials and tribulations, is the Muslim being put to test by other human beings. Naam. Qad yuftan al Muslim bin nas. Because a Muslim could be put to trials and tribulations by the people. Naam. And this is especially important for those of us who are striving to hold on to our deen. Striving to hold on to our identity. Naam. Those who are not trying to compromise themselves away. Who are not trying to compromise their identity until it becomes other than what it originally was. It is incumbent to know that they're going to be from mankind those who are going to harm you as the prophets and the messengers harm came unto them some of them they were killed they were fought against they were verbally abused they were physically accosted so on and so forth and these are the anbiya rusul alayhim salatu was salam so worse has happened to better but this is the nature of holding on to your religion is that from time to time you may be put to test by human beings. They may persecute you. They may put you to trials and tribulations. Don't forget. Don't forget your brothers. Don't forget your brothers throughout the earth. When you make dua, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate from them their pain and their suffering. Those Muslims in China, those Muslims in various parts of the world who are going through those trials and tribulations being put to test by the kuffar, those Muslims in Burma, those Muslims, those Muslims, those Muslims throughout the world who are suffering, those Muslims who are in who are in refugee camps right now because they're stuck between warring nations and so on and so forth, and those who are mistreating them for this, that, or whatever reason. Don't forget your brothers and your sisters when it comes to making dua for them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he alleviates what they are going through and use it and as an expiation for their sins but don't forget yourself too don't forget yourself as well especially living in this place that we are living in you may yourself be encountered by ignorance you may yourself be encountered by one who is bigoted one who hates you just because you are muslim one who hates you just because you worship Allah. One who hates you because you because you believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One who hates you because you are upon Tawheed. One who hates you because you are upon Sunnah. So be patient. Be patient. Don't waver. Be patient. Don't give up. Be patient. Don't try to blend in. Blend into what? Blend into a melting pot of kufr? Blend into a melting pot of kufr? That doesn't make any sense. If someone came to you and they told you, we want you to blend in. We want you to blend in. Everyone here, they have jumped into this pit that is filled with all types of foul smelling things, bodily excrement, so on and so forth. It's a cesspool. Everybody here jumped in the cesspool. They all smell alike. We all stink. So we want you to stink too. So jump in and melt in with us. Would you do that? Would you want to make yourself a part of a defecation soup? No way. You say, I want nothing to do with that. I don't want any parts of that. I don't want to smell like you. Smelling like that is better than kufr. Smelling like that is better than, 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 than shirk. It will be better for a person to emerge himself in that than to emerge himself in the kafir lifestyle. 
it will be better for him to emerge himself in that than to emerge himself inside of shirk polytheism, inside of kufr. So just like we're not going to jump into that, just like we don't want to melt away with that, why would you want to melt away with that which is worse? And when you don't do it, you're going to get feedback. You're going to get flack because you didn't conform to what they wanted you to conform to. But understand that you will not be the first who have undergone this and you will not be the last. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us of those individuals who are weak in their constitution as relates to this. Allah ta'ala, He says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّ بِاللَّهِ وَإِذَا أُذِيَ فِي اللَّهِ جَعْلَ فِتْنَةَ النَّاسِ كَعَذَابِ اللَّهِ He says that they are from human beings, those who say that we, they, that they, we believe in Allah. They are from human beings, those who say we believe in Allah. But when they are tested, but when they are tested for the sake of Allah, when they are tested for the sake of Allah, now when you are persecuted because of your religion, this is a test, it's a trial, this is a test. What you going to do? It's an empty hand. It's an examination. What you going to do? Sister, when you get tested, when they, when they, when they make fun of you, you're going to take your khimar off, you're going to take off the hijab. What you going to do? Brother, when they make fun of you, what you going to do? If you get fired because you pray, what you going to do? If you get fired because they tell you, listen, either you go to Jumu'ah or you don't, or, 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 or you lose your job, your choice. What you going to do? You going to keep your job or you going to go to Jumu'ah and put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave you that job, give you another job. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That as long as you're upon the earth, your rizq, it will come to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you run away from it, your rizq, it will find you. Even if you run away from your provisions, it will find you. That which is written for you, it will find you. So now what you going to do? You going to waver? You going to break? Allah Ta'ala tells about these individuals. Those who, when they receive harm for the sake of Allah, they treat the fitna from the people, they treat the calamity from the people as if it is Allah's punishment. Subhanallah. How many weak individuals do we have out here right now today? How many weak Coward, cowardly individuals are running around the earth right now, today. Those who, not if they're threatened with the loss of a job, not if they are threatened with bodily harm, not if they are threatened with being in prison, so on and so forth. No, doesn't even reach this level. They're only threatened that we're going to speak about you. We're going to gossip about you. We're going to say nasty things about you on social media and so on and so forth. And just that by itself is enough to make some people conform to foolishness. That's it. The threat of being spoken about. The threat of being ostracized by a bunch of losers anyway. Going to conform. What you want me to say? What's our position? <laughs> Allah must end. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. If that's all it takes, then we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there's not a single Muslim like that alive when the child comes. Because if that's all it takes now, you're done. You're done. Ya ibadullah, I want you to reflect, I want you to contemplate on the signs of the hour. Because in that, from the benefits of that, is that one, we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in remembering. But also, we look and we understand and examine the severity of the situation that's going to be at that time. So that we prepare ourselves, we fortify ourselves, we get our iman ready. So that if that were to happen in our lifetime, we will survive it. We teach our families and we rear them so that they are ready. So that if that reaches them in their lifetime, they could survive it. But I want us all now, self-reflection. Analyze yourself, act yourself right now. If the child came out right now, would you survive? Aqeemu salam.